the New York Sunday uh, to give the prayer. Let us pray. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father of mercy, Father of love, we come before you this evening. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the day today. I want to thank you for the leadership of this country. I ask you to continue blessing and guiding them so that they lead this country to prosperity. We ask of all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Good evening. Um, let me first recognize the presence of uh, Mr. President, Hakai um, Hichilema, and also the Vice President, and this is Madame Inonge Wine. Sorry. Tell him, Sorry. Mutale Nalmango. Um, allow me to indicate that um, <coughs> uh, we started a meeting rather uh, delayed, that um, I think the meeting will be as brief as it can be. Um, Mr. President has a message uh, which he, uh, he wishes to deliver, and uh, uh, from the message uh, there may be no questions, really, really it's a very straightforward message and uh, um, we should be able to uh, finish quite quickly. Mr. President, Thank you. Have... Thank you very much. Thank you. Please, those who can sit, you may take your seats. And thank you very much, Secretary to the Cabinet, Dr. Mitty. Obviously, of course, you are the Director of Ceremonies, but the Vice President, uh, Honorable Mutali Nalumango. Uh, don't worry about the mistake, because it's 10 years is a long time. <laughs> so it's fine. She understands that, I'm sure. And others understand that. Uh, the General, sorry, Lieutenant General William Sikazwe is Army Commander with immediate effect to be redeployed soon. I think he did a wonderful job to lead us during this transition. Most of you have no understanding of what was going on, but he and his team did a wonderful job. So it's with great respect that uh, we'll be very delighted for him to serve us as a country in another role and with honor, because I think he acted honorably. Great respect for him. I'm also recalling the Brigadier General Godfrey Gele and appointing him as a new Deputy Army Commander and uh, Chief of Staff and promoting him to the rank of Major General with immediate effect. So those are the two changes in the Zambia Army. Zambia Air Force, by virtue of being the Commander-in-Chief of the Zambia Air Forces, I hereby appoint Brigadier General Collins Barry, Collins Barry, to be the new Air Force Commander and promote him to the rank of Lieutenant General in the Zambia Air Force with immediate effect. I have relieved with immediate effect the services of Lieutenant General David Michael Muma as Zambia Army Commander, sorry, Zambia Air Force Commander, and he too did a commendable job under very difficult circumstances, I'm sure you all know that, and he too will be redeployed to serve our people in a different capacity fairly soon. I'm also appointing Brigadier General Oscar Musitu Nyoni. Brigadier General Oscar Musitu Nyoni as a new Deputy Air Commander and Chief of Staff and invariably promote him to the rank of Major General with immediate effect. Zambia National Service. By virtue of, the, of my being the Commander-in-Chief of the Zambia Armed Forces, I hereby appoint Brigadier General Maliti Patrick Solochi to be the new Zambia National Service Commandant and promote him to the rank of Lieutenant General in the Zambia National Service with immediate effect. I have recalled, relieved rather, 
with immediate effect the services of Lieutenant General Nathan Mulenga as the Zambia National Service Commandant to be redeployed later and thank you for his services in that role. But obviously there are other roles to be played. I'm also appointing a Brigadier, Brigadier General Ruben Mwewa, Brigadier General Ruben Mwewa as the new Deputy Zambia National Service Commandant and Chief of Staff and promoting him to the rank of Major General with immediate effect. I have relieved with immediate effect the services of Major General Benson Miti as Deputy Zambia National Service Commandant and Chief of Staff and he too will be redeployed. Zambia Police. Zambia Police. By virtue of my being the Commander-in-Chief of the Zambia Armed Forces, I'm recalling Mr. Remy Kajova and appointing him to be new Inspector General of Police Service, Police Service. Mr. Remy Kajova to take over as new Inspector General of Police. I have relieved with immediate effect services of Mr. Kako Makanganja as Inspector General of the Zambia Police Service with immediate effect. And equally, he will be relocated, reassigned elsewhere. I'm also recalling Mr. Miuna Muyambango and appointing him as a new Deputy Inspector General of Police Operations with immediate effect. Mr. Miuna Muyambango. Within the Zambia Police Service, I'm appointing MS Doris Nayame Chibombe as the new Deputy Inspector General of Police Administration with immediate effect. MS Doris Nayame Chibombe as Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of administration. I have relieved Mrs. Charit, MS Charit Katanga as Deputy Inspector General of Police Operations with immediate effect. I have relieved services of Mr. Richard Mwene as Deputy Inspector General of Police Administration with immediate effect. So, Madam Doris Katanga uh, leaves the Deputy Inspector Generalship Operations. Mr. Richard Mwene, too, leaves that portfolio and leaves it to the colleagues that are assigned above. Further, I'm relieving all commissioners of police from their duties with immediate effect. All commissioners, there's reorganization coming through there, and I must clarify, because it's very important, that uh, now you have a situation where the Inspector General of Police, the deputies, two deputies, are sworn in by the President and all the commissioners in the provinces. And this was creating a problem in terms of the command structure to an extent where sometimes the commissioners were acting outside the direction of the Inspector General of Police and it was creating problems. And uh, I'm not sure how we managed it, but I think you saw sometimes the chaos that was there. So we want to be orderly, we want to have a command structure that is very clear, and some of these commissioners may end up coming back under the new structure but with a clear command structure where the Inspector General of Police is in charge of the police. Thank you. I guess these are the changes that we have announced today. We will continue with this process tomorrow and uh, I wish to reiterate our message that the exiting service chiefs the exiting service chiefs have served our country diligently. They deserve our respect. They deserve our compassion. And you will see that this government, this new administration, will operate with respect. Very polite, but when necessary, very firm. 
all the time looking at the interests of the people of Zambia and nothing else. So we believe that the media will not demonize the colleagues that are going because we're not demonizing them. It's time for everything, different roles. We all move in. Yesterday or the day before, there was a president taking retirement. Today, there's a new president. Couple of years, who knows? One of you journalists may be the new president of this country. And then life goes on. But we maintain respectability, mutual understanding, all in the service of society. And for the incoming service chiefs, we urge you to understand why you've come in. People. People, people of Zambia, all the time. You will see some changes, some new guidelines in the police, with the principle that no one should be arrested before an investigation is carried out. No one. When somebody is arrested, because there's been an investigation, the police must give police bond where it's applicable. And it's not a security risk. It is not a matter that will lead to a breakdown in the rule of law, law and order. Very important. I think most of you understand why I'm saying what I'm saying. And the police must take those arrested to court within 48 hours. That's a legal requirement. Anything above that we are transgressing the rights of citizens in policing, in security, in ensuring law and order. We must also respect human rights, liberties, and freedoms. I think journalists, you like this. I know you like it. I know what you've gone through. Then the judicial system when a matter is taken to court, must grant bail, must grant bail. Again, where there's no security risk, where there's no risk of crossing over to a breakdown in the rule of law, and bail conditions should and will be relaxed. So that that's not the reason people remain in detention when their offense is bailable. So they will be able to get bail, conditions that are fair, that respect the rule of law and the rights of citizens. But that's not to promote criminality. Because where your rights end, someone else's rights start. So you can't step on other people's rights. That's why the police service will be there. I spent a bit of time Vice President, Secretary of the Cabinet, so I can clarify what this new dawn means. This freedom. When we were campaigning, you saw songs, young ladies used to sing and dance, freedom is coming, freedom is coming. This is it. This is the freedom, but within the rule of law. So essentially, I had to explain this so that it's understood properly. But that would be no reason for police to say, the president said, do not arrest people. I didn't say that. I said, do not arrest people without investigating to determine whether they've committed a crime or not. Equally, members of society, community, vice president, secretary of the cabinet, cadres will not be allowed to attack police officers. They will not be allowed to attack police officers as what happened in Lusaka at one of the police stations. That too will not be allowed because that will be now transgressing on the rights of policemen and women, men and women in uniform who are serving under very difficult times. I guess that is enough. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you very much for listening. We wish you well. Tonight, tomorrow, going forward, 
It's a new dawn. It's freedom. Freedom to be responsible, freedom to enterprise, freedom to be supported by your government, freedom to know that you have to do something for your own country, not always asking your country to do something for you. Then we meet in the middle. You will see a better country a few years from now. That's a promise. That's a commitment. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I think the message has been loud and clear. And I'm uh, sorry, Madam uh, Vice President, Cardinal uh, Mambo, slip of the tongue. Uh, shall we sing the national anthem? The first and the last time. Stand and sing of Zambia, Zambia proud and free. Land of work and joy, unity. Make us in the struggle for the right. We want freedom, swan. Oh, one strong and free. One nation is our crown. Dignity and peace be good to us. Like a noble eagle in his flight, Zambia, praise to thee, O oh, one strong and free. Praise be to thee. Praise be, praise be, praise be. Bless our great Zambia. Zambia, free men we stand under the flag of our land. Zambia, praise to thee, O oh, one strong and free. Thank you very much. All right, colleagues, thank you. You look extra quiet today, I'm not sure what the issue is. Anxiety or what? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.